Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GCSE science teacher. In today's video, we're going to be learning about phytomining and bioleaching as methods of metal extraction for GCSE chemistry. I hope you do find this video helpful. If you do, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, share this with someone else. And if you'd like to and you haven't already, please do subscribe as well. It'd be great to have you here. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about where do metals come from? So metals, all the devices that we use, any transportation, any cutlery that we use, to consume food, everything that has metals will have originated in one way, shape or form as a metal ore. And as you can see here, a metal ore essentially is just bits of metal and rocks together. And we get this from the Earth's crust, essentially, and we have to use mining techniques to establish and take those from the ground. Um, and as you can imagine, this is quite a destructive process because a lot of habitat loss occurs as a result of this. Um, but also metals are actually a finite resource as well. So once we've collected those metal ores, we have to undergo a process of metal extraction with them. But also that means that once those metals are used up from the Earth's crust, we can't get them back. That is pretty much all there is. Um, so we're in this position now as a society where we have a lot of the higher grade ores, a lot of those ores that contain a lot more metal components to them. Um, and we have a lot of the lower grade ores left on the Earth's crust. Um, and that therefore requires different extraction processes to take those metals that are left in the low grade ores. So we're going to focus on those techniques today, um, phytomining and bioleaching specifically, and how they are used to extract those metals from those lower grade ores as well. But I think it's worth mentioning that this topic really does link nicely to this idea of sustainability and also, um, you know, the finite resources that we've already talked about. So things like fossil fuels, like crude oil, um, natural gas, coal, all that kind of thing, it all links nicely to it. And also climate change and global warming and all of that. So if you haven't watched any of those videos that I previously did on those topics, I'll link them for you as well. So the first process we're going to talk about is called phyto mining, and often it can be called phyto extraction as well. But both of these processes are the same thing. And if we look at the etymology of these words, the uh, prefix phyto simply means plants and mining and extraction are quite self-explanatory. So we are using plants in this process to gain those low grade uh, metal ores from the soil itself and actually extract the metals from those low grade ores. Um, so how is this done? Well, we get some plants and we want to grow them in the soil that contains the low grade ores. And over time, those plants root system starts to develop and absorb those mineral ions through their root hair cells. And those ions actually start to become concentrated in the cells of the plant. Now, once the plant has fully established itself, it starts to grow to a certain level. Those plants are actually harvested and then they are burnt. And the ash that's left behind after the combustion process contains those metal compounds that we can then use. So this process is actually a very slow process, as you can imagine, um, but it does reduce the mining efforts and it conserves those limited resources, those higher grade ores that would otherwise um, be used first. Um, however, that being said, of course, if we're burning plants, this will release a lot of carbon emissions into the atmosphere through that combustion process, which is not necessarily a good thing because it can build up and increase the effects of the greenhouse effect. Um, and also if we're cutting down trees or we're cutting down plants that absorb CO2 um, through the stomata in the process of photosynthesis, this also can lead to an increase in the greenhouse effect as well. So not necessarily a great thing for the environment, although when you look at it as an opportunity to reduce mining, it can also be seen as a positive. So there are some positives and negatives to this process in general. Um, another positive is that it does reduce the amount of disposal of rock waste from the uh, traditional mining method. So like I said, there are pros and cons to everything. This is an example of that, um, and it's just worth being aware of. So here is the second method that you should be aware of, and it's called bioleaching. Now, bioleaching um, sounds a bit unusual, but if we break the word down, bio, remember, is just a prefix to help us understand living things. So biology, for example, is a study of life. Bio is referring to the living organism in this process called bacteria. Now, there's lots of different types of bacteria. You don't necessarily need to know the strain or the species of bacteria. You just need to know that some bacteria are able to be used for this process. And essentially what they do is they break down low-grade ores. 
And what they, as a result of, do is they produce a very acidic solution, which contains the metal ions itself, um, such as copper. Now, copper is a really useful resource because it's used in a lot of electrical wires. Um, it's a very good conductor of electricity. But as I've said before, those high grade ores um, are really hard to find. They require a lot of mining and they are um, in a very short supply because they are a finite resource. So we do have to use these methods to find other sources of copper, for example. Um, that acidic solution that's produced by the bacteria in this process of bioleaching is called the leachate. And it's a word that you should be using in your answer. Now, although this is a kind of a chemical biological process, um, a lot of the time we need high temperatures and things like that to get the process occurring. But remember that it's a bacteria that's doing this. Um, so high temperatures are not actually needed, which is a good thing because it's more cost effective. However, as a result of this process, like I said, the leachate is a very acidic solution. In fact, it's sulfuric acid, so it's incredibly toxic. We need to be very careful about how we dispose of this particular solution. And as, as a result, as well, it's very corrosive. As you can see, this is a hazard. Uh, safety symbol. So we've got to be very careful in our handling of this as well. So let's talk about the actual process of bioleaching a bit more detail. So like I said before, we have the bacteria that breaks these metal compounds down into the leachate, into the acidic solution. Um, and to get the metal from that leachate, to remove it from the acid, we actually need to use the reactivity series and displacement reactions. Now I have done a video on this previously, um, and it's worth going over that again, just to recap your understanding, because what they like to do at GCSE, they like to use a lot of topic one or paper one topics and link them to paper two, regardless of the exam board, they like to mix them a bit to build on knowledge and make it more of an applied content, especially when you get to the end of the exam um, with paper two content. So definitely go back and check that video. I'll link that for you. But the reactivity series essentially is just a list of metals in order of reactivity. So the top one, is the most reactive metal, the bottom one is the least reactive. And we can use this reactivity series to predict uh, something called a displacement reaction. So the more reactive metal will essentially swap out or displace the less reactive metal from its compound. And that is a really good technique that we can use as scientists to extract metals from their compounds. So for example, if we have copper sulfate leachate, um, we obviously know that this is not what the original, the end product should be, I should say. Copper is what we want, um, but it has sulfate attached to it. It's in this leachate compound. We don't want that. So what we can do is we can react the copper sulfate with another metal, specifically scrap metal. So metals that don't really have um, a huge amount of purpose um, for anything really. So scrap metals are really good for this. Um, scrap metals like scrap iron is really good for this um, because they have a higher reactivity than copper. So what happens is when we um, combine the iron or the scrap metal, such as iron, with the copper sulfate, it will displace the copper from the uh, compound. And what we end up with is copper on its own, which is exactly what we want. We've extracted that metal, but we also end up with iron sulfate as well. And you can see that with the symbol FeSO4. Now we can use other methods as well. Um, we could also use electrolysis. Um, electrolysis is another method of metal extraction. It requires a lot of energy. So a lot of the time um, companies may use this method as a preferable one just because we're using scrap metal and things like that. It's a bit of a more cost effective um, you know, method. Um, but yeah, electrolysis can be used. Now, I haven't covered electrolysis in a huge amount of detail on my channel. Um, but I know from teaching this topic and just teaching in general that electrolysis is one of those topics students find particularly uh, challenging because there's a lot of things to know. If you would like me to make a playlist, a series of videos on the topic of electrolysis, please let me know in the comment section, thumbs up this video, let me know. Um, and I can definitely make that for you guys. And that's it from me today. I've been the GCSE science teacher and you have been curious. If you did enjoy this video, let me know by sharing it, liking it, and also subscribing. Please do join this community. It'd be great to have you here. And thank you so much for choosing to revise with me. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.